Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. From Windy Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Dan. And filling in for the very sickly and weak Frank, I'm Mark. <laughs> wow, your first time on the show and you're already going after Frank. It's it, it honestly is the best policy. <laughs> it is indeed. Yes, Frank is uh, is unwell this week, so uh, Mark has graciously uh, allowed us to to ha- to have him step in. Glad to be here. You're a you're a longtime listener, first time co host. First time co host, indeed, is, is what you are. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for 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 stopping by, Mark. Happy to be here. Really, uh, really a, a pleasure to have you. It's uh, it's an honor to be asked to be on the show. And I was I was saying to you earlier that uh, you're you're a decent uh, you're a decent analog for our Frank, uh, being an ex Mormon uh, gay man. That's right. We're really mixing it up. Yeah, <laughs> a man who was a Mormon <laughs> who is gay, but I'm not from Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Totally different story totally, then. Totally diverse. Also, you have a rather epic mustache. Thank you. Which Frank has none of. Yeah, it's it's hard to see in a podcast, but believe us, it's there. It's, oh, they can hear it. Can they hear it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's actually his mustache rubbing against your ear balls. Here's some more. Yeah. <laughs> now you get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You we, know, you, you know, know what? Else? You know what I'm going to make you do? Yeah. Tell a mustache story. Because you have, <laughs> you have to understand, people, this mustache is so good. We're talking Selleck good that, it's, that you have stories related to this mustache. Yeah, it's Saddam good. Yeah. <laughs> it's Saddam good. It's Saddam good. So I, I think I told you the other day one of my favorites was we were, uh, were here in beautiful Salt Lake City, and I was uh, working on a project out south in a kind of funky neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, this little boy goes riding by me, probably five, on his big wheel. He actually had a real big wheel. And he goes riding by, and as he goes by me, he kind of clocks me as I walk. And his mom's walking like 10 feet behind him. He's just eyeballing you. Totally giving me the stink eye. (laughs) And his mom's like 10 feet behind him. And as soon as he gets past me, he turns around and whisper shouts to his mom, Mom! That guy's wearing a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we better uh, we better do our show here. Um, I, what do we do? Why don't you take? Why don't you tell us a story? Okay, so we're gonna go right into stories. Yeah, yeah. I'll just dive you in there. Uh, well, this week has been a big week for uh, county clerks in Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky. Sure, sure. Yeah. Is that what state is that? The Show Me State, or that's the uh, that's the county clerk state. That's the county. That's the go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm not serving you state. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so everybody, go to Kentucky immediately. Right. Um, and spend your money there. No, don't. Um, so Kim Davis, the uh, very Christian. A uh, county clerk in a county whose name, who gives a shit, right? Um, who dresses <laughs> like a sister wife, has uh, continued her crusade of not issuing marriage licenses. Bravely. To, bravely it, continued her crusade. Very brave. <laughs> um, so she's continued to not follow the law and issue marriage licenses to right. taxpayers and citizens of her county who wish to be legally married. Well, she has a, a sincerely held religious belief. Uh, apparently so. Uh, she follows all the teachings of the Bible in regards to marriage, uh, well, uh, including having done it herself four times now. Right. She's kind of skipped the rules about divorce yeah well here's the thing is i'm not sure she's divorced <laughs> oh maybe she's just stacking them Scunt dun dun. <laughs> she's she's a she's a polygynist no that's still men no and that's it's still, not that's still women what, what is, is it called? called it's not polyandry that's that's it, just that's n- no i think that's when you marry other married people no that's polyamory that's polyamory polyandry i think it is polyandry androgynous it's got it's yeah. andro meaning men is that uh, what that means? Yeah, poly men. Many men. Many men. Okay, so maybe that's what it is. That's so what she's got. May, we, we don't know if she's been divorced. And it's <laughs> Kentucky, so we don't really know what people do behind the privacy of their double wide. Although I did look up their state motto. What is it? Uh, a little ironic. United we stand, divided we fall. Aw. They're so divided right now. Well, they're probably going to change that. They're, they're falling. She, she will refuse to say that motto until she's arrested. Right. So she, uh, as of this recording, has now been sent to time out <laughs> right. by a federal judge, which uh, 
it's an inter- it's an interesting uh, uh, incarceration, and I didn't really know this was a thing that you could do. It's literally a timeout. It's she can come. She can go to the you know banger cup on the on the uh, bars and get the jailer over there uh-huh. and say I will now issue licenses and they'll let her out. So it's just it's just you you go think about what you've done. You go think about what you've done, and it's <laughs> he's, she's grounded. She's grounded, and she could be grounded for the rest of her life. It's up to her. Wow. So it's. See, but this is bad because here's the thing. She is the kind of person who is getting notoriety and fame for taking a stand for Jesus. Yes. And she's not going to want to, like, like, even if she could be convinced that the reasonable position would be to give it, she's already picked her side, and it's Jesus. It's not like I'm taking a stand for, you know, golf or whatever. Like,. (laughs) It's not something where it's easy to just go, oh, uh, you know, I don't need that stand anymore. Yeah, I, I, I you know, the, the, we can talk a bit, too, at some point about the whole, you know, Christian persecution, martyrdom, industrial complex. Yes. But, you know, I think she's I think she's going for the Joe the Plumber Prize, right? Yeah, she's just, absolutely. She's clearly she has no convictions based uh, about marriage because right. she tends to go through them like you and I go through socks. She, oh, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Tell me. I'm going to make a prediction. What is it? Here's what she's going to do. She's not going to ever change her view on marriage, so she's never going to give out. So she, here's what she's going to do. She is going to, we're, what we're going to hear, my prediction is, what we're going to hear is that she is going to be released from prison having resigned her position. Yes. And then some GOP candidate is going to have her on his arm like the entire way through the campaign. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's and it will be Joe the plumber. Yeah, it will be Joe the plumber. She's Kim and, the clerk, and and she, you know, I mean, look at the poor thing. She doesn't have, you know, the leg. When I say legs, legs is a term of the ability to go the distance. Right. Please don't think I'm saying something horribly sexist here, but she doesn't have the legs that uh, Sarah Palin does to kind of stay in it. Right. Oh and, no. And grift forever. She's just. She's not. She's too kind of hill country and human. And human and probably, you know, I've heard her speak a little bit in these, you know, these things people post to YouTube. She does not speak even well enough to be a GOP presidential candidate. No, no, no. She's a very humble character in that way. But, you know, I think her ride is probably not going to be as long as she'd hope. And she probably won't make as much money as she'd hope. Right. But she'll make as much money as she, you know, in six months, she'll make the money she would have made in five years of county clerking and, you know. Oh yeah, she's she's in ye- old yeller holler, Kentucky. She's perfectly set up to be a GOP hero, and I'm guessing that that's that her lawyer probably like is has been has been advising her not just on her legal state, but on like press how yeah how this is how to like basically make cast her lot in with the GOP in a way that will make her a hero. Yeah, probably a publicist. He's acting like a publicist. Right, exactly. Yeah. I will say this. Uh, so I said, I told you what the Kentucky uh, state motto was, and, <laughs> and then I realized I didn't know what our state motto was, so on a whim I just typed in that. I know what it is. Can I say it? Please do. Industry. That's a motto? And I know. It's kind it's of a- It's just a word. It's kind of a, 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 <laughs> a stream of consciousness declarative. <laughs> it is. It's like, okay, think of a word, then shout it. It needs it needs an exclamation point at least. Does it have one? I think it's just the word. So it's kind of like industry. It's just industry. <laughs> we like in, to be industrious. How did we not come up with a better motto than that? I don't know. I don't know. I, we s- suck. We are, the state bird is the stupid seagull. It's the California seagull. The California gull. The California gull is our state is our state bird. Our state tree is the Colorado blue spruce. Yeah. We don't have any of our own things. No, we don't. And, uh, you know, the seagull of, of, is our state bird, for those of you who don't know, because it ate bugs. <laughs> right, right. That's, that, that's true. Yeah, it earned such a place of honor <laughs> because of its, its appetite for bugs. For bugs. Yeah. All right. It was a miracle. I'm going to move on. Move or, on. Is there more to Well, the, the only thing story? I was going to say is, is I think that, that our, our right-wing Christian friends have really got to go hit the dictionary about the word, the term martyr mm. or martyrdom, you know, <laughs> in, in, in the, in the book they've read, uh, martyrs, they died. They, they yeah. acted on their conscience knowing full well, right. That the force of Rome or whomever 
was going to kill was him. was going to kill him, yeah. but they did it anyway. Right. So what these people are at, what people like her are asking for, despite her six hours she'll spend in jail, so that'll be twelve holocausts. <laughs> what they're asking for is they want to act on this conscience that they claim to have without consequence. Right. So they don't want the, what they're demanding that the law not punish them for doing this, mm. and then they compare themselves to you know people like Dr. King, right, who knew full well. Yeah. When he marched into whatever city, the police were with totally within their rights under Jim Crow to crack his skull open. Yeah. And that's that was courage. And they were. Yeah, exactly. That yes. was. And and he was martyred. And the question becomes, how much courage does it take to stand with 70 percent of the population of your country? <laughs> I stand strong as a Christian. Yes. With everyone else here. She's a real outlier. Boy, she is. A, it's a brave, brave soul. <laughs> exactly. All right, I'm going to move on to, uh, speaking of Rome, have you heard of this Pope Francis character that's walking around over there? No, but I'd like to know more. <laughs> he's, he's a guy. Uh, kind of important. Uh, so here's a, an interesting thing. and oh, I, He's one of those professional virgins that wears a dress and yells at everybody about sex. Yeah, he, uh, he likes that. Okay, got it. <laughs> but what he does, uh, what he did recently was interesting, which was that he... Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to decide if this is a baby step or not. He said that all priests in the Catholic Church can now forgive a woman for having an abortion. <sighs> now, up until this moment, uh, in order to, be f to get forgiveness for having an abortion, uh, which they believe is a very, very bad thing to mm, do, mm. Uh, you would have to be a bishop or higher. Uh, that would forgive you. And now all of these priests uh, apparently have the authority for like a year. I think it's a trial period. <laughs> I think they're just trying it out. Right. Uh, but but yes, they, it, it's, uh, you see, it's they're calling this the year of mercy. And they're uh, and, and they're they're saying that uh, priests can do it. You know, it's it. <sighs> It's so hard to, as a, as a non-believer and an outsider and, an, and a never Catholic, right? Uh, you know, you can look at these things and go, you know, welcome to the 20th century, I guess. Right. Welcome to kind of post-enlightenment ideas. Right. But, you know, you have to really look at it or you can make a fun game of looking at it from inside their worldview. Right. In which I'm imagining that is seismic. Absolutely. As yeah. a matter of fact, of course, there is outcry among those who disagree with this uh, with with this idea. Oh no! Um, one person, the Re Reverend James Martin, a Jesuit priest and editor ed editor at large at America Magazine. He has, um, he has two first names. I know he does. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, he he said, "What what's new is that Pope Francis, at least for the Year of Mercy, is universalizing this permission." Oh, I guess he's. Oh, I re I misread that. That's dumb. He's talking about permission for the priests, not for the not for the women. Right, well, uh, well, obviously, if you're going, to, if you're a Catholic, and you're going to have an abortion, this is the year. This is your year. You get in there, right? And so, whatever that cutoff is at midnight. And if you are a Catholic, remember, it's easier to get forgiveness than permission. <laughs> totally, always. The, you will never be granted permission. No. Well, Ever. and that's the thing about about uh, Jeebus is that he's got that whole "I'll forgive you for anything." All you have to do is ask clause. Yeah, which was stupid. Uh, yeah, that was a bad idea to put in there. It has it has had ripples. Yeah, that uh, a couple of our other stories I think may touch upon. Yeah, indeed. Um, You're going to touch my ripples. I I, I can barely reach, <laughs> even though they they're kind of protrusive. I don't know. It's in this sexy. cold in this just, cold air. I'm just going to say it sounded sexy. Yeah, it's funny that, you know, for the rest of us who live in uh, on Earth yeah. and not in Middle Earth where these people live, <laughs> um, there is nothing to apologize for. Right. Uh, this is a, a legal, safe, oftentimes medically necessary, uh, and completely at and otherwise completely at dis the discretion of the fully formed human being whose life it affects. Right. And already exists an extant human. An extant human who is uh, yes. who is deciding n whether or not to continue in the creation of a potential human. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who is who is making a choice about their reproductive cycle? Right. Which uh, anyone who doesn't live in a cave thinks is great. 
fine. You do that. Yes, please and, make that decision. And do it safely and with our blessing. And, and I would say, you know, even though there's this hysteria about Planned Parenthood, do it with our tax dollars like you would do any other medical procedure that you require right. but may not be able to afford. We'll do it with our tax dollars because you will end up saving us so much money. So much money. Over having a child. Yes. That you don't want or that you can't care for or right. that society then has to take on. Hell, have five or six of those abortions. Yeah. And you'll still save us money over you having a child. You have five or six, you will get the seventh one free. <laughs> Let's just throw it in. Yeah. We're just going to throw it in. Yeah. It's a, it's a mad, mad sale. Offer on... excludes twins and triplets. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Because that's a little more involved. Yeah, that's just, just too much. But I guess if you're <laughs> if you're a Catholic woman, you know, of course, there was that that oh. poor child in Paraguay whose father, I think it was her father, raped her. She she gave birth to the child, I think, at age. She was age 11. The child wasn't age 11. <laughs> and um, and the, the Paraguayan government, very much a, you know, in the thrall of the Catholic Church, refused to allow her. To have to an abort. abortion. Right. Yeah. And, and our friend Mike Huckabee said, yeah. Yeah. That was the right call. Yep. Good one, Paraguay. Yeah. Yeah. But she's a Catholic, maybe, so she can... Well, she doesn't need forgiveness. She didn't have an abortion. She didn't have... A, she's got nothing to forgive. Yeah. Well, I mean, she has things that she may need to eventually try to forgive somebody for. There are a lot of people who need her forgiveness. At this uh, yeah, point. but anyway, yeah. What uh, what do you got? Well, I want to take us a little closer to home. Okay. Um, on paper, this town is spelled Layton, right? But in the local patois, it is pronounced Layton. Layton. <laughs> I will take us to Layton, Utah, where noted pedophile Timothy Morgan Butler. I, you're gonna call him noted? He's new. Uh, I, he, he's, I feel like he's new to it. He's in my notes. Okay, well, yeah. then he's noted. Yes. He has of the, is, as of this moment, he is a noted pedophile. It's true. Timothy Morgan Butler told the local police that the, <laughs> this is a quote, the Bible did not set limits on the age between two partners. Yeah. And I must say that Timothy Morgan Butler, noted pedophile, is correct. Yeah, he... He thought that that was a valid defense. That's what's amazing here. Yeah. Uh, I read this story and was just, I just, you got to cock your head to the side a little bit because <laughs> it's just one of those, I might break my neck uh, <laughs> with all the head cocking. Especially when you look at his beautiful face. Oh. Did you see the beautiful face? Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a. Look at that punum. <laughs> he's a fine, fine looking man. Mm. Another mustachioed fellow. What the way now? <laughs> I'm just going to say. Uh, what biblical prophet wouldn't love that face? Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, so when this is, I mean, this is the natural consequence of someone, of people backing this county clerk lady. Because mm -hmm. when you start to say, well, personal held, you know, sincerely held personal religious beliefs, Trump actual laws of the land, you're going to find yourself in some murky water Awful quick. You're going to discover just how many crazy motherfuckers there are out there. Yeah. Who have very sincerely held religious, religious beliefs. beliefs. Yeah. He, he told, I don't, I don't want to step on your toes on because this is your story, but I was shocked that he, he told pretty much everybody that he, he did this for love. <laughs> like his wife wasn't loving him. And he wanted to show these girls some love, mm. and uh, they weren't getting enough love at home. Mm. He's just misunderstood. Honestly, it's just an... It, I mean, yes, He's, there's a sexual component to it, but he was there for the emotional uh, yeah. stuff. He's kind of uh, if Charlie Brown was a sex criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he actually he kind of like looks like... A 50-something-year-old sex criminal. Yeah, I think that's what Charlie Brown grows up to be. He's got that big, round, bald head. He, he never... When you think about Charlie Brown, he never understood what was going on. No, he, he was, never... No. He had that sort of... That cluelessness about him that is adorable as a child, but once it gets old enough, whoo, you got to look out for that. Yeah, put an anklet on that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's a piece of work. He, oh, um, my God. Uh, you know what I, I, I thought was amazing and, and not at all surprising about this, uh, you know, since we both grew up here in Utah yeah, and this kind of thing comes to the surface from time to time uh -huh. is the lack of the Bible's age of consent commandment. Right. You'd think, you know, 
want your neighbor's ox all day, <laughs> but let's just put one, let's just slide something in between like seven and eight there. You're talking about amending their top ten list of uh, I, I think we need, I think we need an addendum. Sure. That just establishes. A postscript, perhaps? Yeah. Maybe covet under 16, but don't touch under 16. Right. right? Yeah, like, sure. That seems like an important, but it's an omission that has been discovered by so many people. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're talking about the likes of our friend Joseph Smith. Oh, uh, sure. David Koresh, Jim Jones, local fa- local favorite Warren Jeffs. Sure. Uh, sure. They all, they all, I mean, they like that young strange. What they, are you going to do? They, kind, they, they also, despite their studies, could not find <laughs> the age of consent in the Bible. Right, yeah. They, they and searched. boy, did they look. I, I'm sure they looked. I mean, guys like Joe Smith don't. Here's the thing about starting your own religion. If you come up with something that contradicts the Bible, you can come up with a workaround. Oh, yeah. But they didn't need it. No. Because there's nothing in the Bible that says no fucking kids. No, not that I'm aware of. And in fact, in the, gosh, I'm trying to narrow it to one Bible story, but in, let's just say all of them, yeah. <laughs> there was some degree of fucking kids, right? Well, I mean. I think that not in Jonah because there were no kids in the whale. Right, <laughs> right. right. Had there been a whole different story. <laughs> That would have been some fishy, Good Lord, fishy yeah. sex time. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I mean, Mary was when she, when when God fucked Mary, she was just a, a wee one. She was like a maiden. Yes, she was uh, like twelve or fourteen or something. Yeah, very young, very very young. Yeah, well, and we to be fair, uh, and for those of vo- those of you who've never heard of it, there's this thing here in Salt Lake called the Mormon Church has just released uh, what they hoped would be a little release valve or work around on the Joseph Smith marrying girls issue. Oh yeah. And, and they described, uh, uh, a, an underage girl as uh, who was a wife. And I think there were probably more of them as on the eve of 15. Oh, <laughs> that's delightful. Almost 15. She was, she was almost to an age. That's also not acceptable. Yeah, she was on the <laughs> half a decade away from 19. <laughs> so she was, Literally just years away from being yeah. 25. So we'll see how this guy's case goes. I, I hope Frank and Dan will, will follow it to the bitter end. I, I imagine it will it will end spectacularly. Yeah, I don't know. I imagine it just... He goes to jail, right? Oh, let's hope. Like, whatever. what else could possibly happen? Uh, here he could... I don't know. You, you never, never know in Utah. Well, that, if he gets a... If, if his bishop signs on, then, then the whole world... Uh, the most delicious irony, of course, is that he will be, he will be swearing into his criminal trial on the same Bible that, that justified... <laughs> right. He's been trying to defend himself. Did you know that? The, the judge won't let him, but he keeps saying... He keeps saying, I can... And literally, the, like, when the judge, when the judge said... Uh, the judge was like quizzing him with some legalese, mm. some legal words to say, hey, do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? And he was like, well, I can find anything on Google. <laughs> oh, I'll bet he can. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet That's he a has. man who knows how to find stuff on Google. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. The Google where most of us dare not tread. Yes, exactly. And wouldn't want to even if we could. No. Okay, well, I'm going to take us to a, uh, a, a part of the country called Luther, Oklahoma. Luther, Oklahoma. <laughs> Where, uh, where that would be a great name for like a renegade cop in a, in a movie. <laughs> I am Luther, Oklahoma. Luther, Oklahoma. <laughs> exactly. Gets called into his into his sergeant's office angrily all the time. Oklahoma! And then he throws his badge and it sticks in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, in the town that's called that, uh, since there is no uh, yet any any uh, cop that could take that mantle on, uh, there's there's outcry. Among parents of of school students, uh, because what has happened it, what has happened is that there is a, a new uh, policy that is in place or is sort of in place uh, at a school that to keep everybody safe, hmm. and that policy includes banning the wearing of certain clothing items. Right, like those those conical. Uh breast pieces that madonna used to wear in, in the 90s those are super dangerous i'm sure those are i'm sure those are out as well right but uh but what but what they have now banned are crosses any cro- any clothing with crosses on it and cowboy boots cowboy boots with crosses on them those are extra out 
So you're, just just cowboy you're, boots. You're doubly not allowed to wear uh, any cowboy boot with crosses on them. But no, you can't wear cowboy boots and you can't wear crosses because gangs. What? <laughs> what? Because they think that it's a gang thing if you wear that. They're worried about that. Well, a cross clearly you're in a gang. Well, you're, it could be argued that really, if you're wearing a cross, you're kind of in yeah a big. A bullying gang. Yeah, you're in the North Side uh, Nazarenes. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's trouble. <clears throat> but what's why cowboy boots? What's up? I don't know. Oklahoma, man. It doesn't say. But nobody wears anything else. I I don't know. Yeah, I w- that's what I would have thought. But apparently uh, they do. Uh, and and if you're wearing the cowboy boots, they're worried that you're in a gang. There there were some parents. There was at least one parent who claimed that there are no gangs in uh, in Luther. <laughs> Uh, so that would be a stu- so that's a stupid policy. Now, mind you, the uh, the superintendent of the schools uh, says no, that's not that that they allow that they allow those things, and he has <laughs> multiple Jesusy things up in his office to prove it. So, but he's the one that passed the policy. No, it was the uh, it was the well, what do they call it? The not the superintendent, but like the provost of schools. The principal i don't know what it was it was a it was a guy below superintendent who uh who made this uh, rule weird well i just did a google image search of luther oklahoma uh-huh. and crosses and cowboy boots are way down on the list of the problems they got i'm sure that's absolutely the case yeah it I'm, looks it looks like mostly what they do there is tornadoes <laughs> well they're good at those yeah. in oklahoma yeah go with what you know that's what i always say <laughs> exactly uh so anyway, that's so so there you go. Controversy a, a, a protest has been set up has uh, and 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 is is going to be by the time our listeners hear this will have occurred an angry protest. I uh, I think a tasteful cross is should be allowed, shouldn't it? I mean, what are you into gangs? Not as big as like Chris Angel Mind Freak. <laughs> Not, nothing, nothing along those lines. Yeah, but you know, tasteful, smaller, right? I, maybe it's maybe it's a taste issue. Maybe it's just that the kids are wearing the the, the uh, affliction T shirts with the giant crosses on them, and it's just like, oh, yeah. You should you, when you look up Luther, you'll see that it's a very classy <laughs> place. Sorry, maybe, maybe they have just a really super fashion conscious, crazy fashion conscious uh, uh, principal who's just like, oh my god, that's so tacky. Cowboy boots are so. 126 years ago. I can't even. I won't. No. You know what? Fuck it. You can't do it. No wow. crosses, no cowboy boots, and probably none of that like really thick stitching on your jeans. So there's maybe like cowboy gang. It's like cowboy gangs. Yes. It's redneck gangs. That's right. the problem. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, then I'm, I agree. <laughs> yeah. We don't want cowboy gangs roving the streets. No, they're loners by nature. They're uh, the, yeah. Get out onto a onto a range. Yeah, get up, get up on a, on a horizon before the sunset, sure. and just sit on your horse and just and be alone. And you stay there. <laughs> you stay there. That's where you belong, on sir. The, on the outskirts, a Luther. Not not making trouble. No, you don't, we, they don't get they don't get together. We saw what happened on what was that thing, Ponderosa Ranch? What was that show? Uh, ba- Bonanza. Bonanza. When they hang out together. Like, Banzai. No, that's not it. <laughs> that was not it at all. <laughs> I think that's the uh, the Japanese version, though. Well, that's weird. I'm sure that the crosses will be overturned shortly. Yeah, I'm sure that. I'm sure that that is. Yeah, they're all going to wear their crosses, and everything will be fine. Well, shall I go? Please do. Uh, this is an alert. Alert. Alert, everyone. Okay. Alert. APB. Dateline, Rockford, Illinois. Is that how you say Illinois? Sure. Or is it Illinois? I think I think you had it right the first time. I'm from a square state. I don't know what that, how to say that word. It turns out Josh Duggar. Oh, famed, famed. Yes. Who was headed to a sort of rehab. Yeah. Has flown the coop. What? He's he, he's on the lamb. He bolted? The lamb of God. He's <laughs> gone. Yeah, he has not been he he apparently reported to uh what is this place called Reformers Anonymous. Right. Which is a uh a Bible-based right. um non-therapeutic uh, non-therapeutic treatment program for people that are overprivileged white patriarchal assholes. Right. Uh, so who, who love Jesus? So they read the Old Testament to get over that particular problem, right? Um, but he he went to this place, which I read the schedule. It's crazy. Like from from like four thirty in the morning until eleven o'clock at night, you're scheduled, right? Mm. And I don't think you have the Google. 
Okay. So if that you know if you are that busy with activities, hopefully you're keeping your hand off your peke, right, and off everybody else, right. Uh, so, yeah, because he was checked in for uh, specifically for pornography addiction. Pornography addiction, which doesn't really seem like it's the problem. <laughs> but like, the dude just likes fucking. That's the problem. Uh, yeah. Well, I I think that we I don't sh- even know if it's a problem. It's a problem for him. As a nation, we should celebrate that he he has uh, age appropriate cravings at this now? point. Yeah. Finally. So sure. So let's put him on a stamp. <laughs> right. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it seems to me that the the real problem was the the child issue he had, even though he was a young man, yeah. you know, minors can also be pedophiles. Right. And he did a, a fantastic job at that. Um I I don't see how this other thing is really a problem in the world. What, his it, infidelity to his wife. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not it's it's it it's a problem in his marriage and 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 stuff, but but yeah, I mean it's certainly no big deal uh, on on a uh, molest molestation uh, R- right. scale, right? And then, but I mean, a caveat to that is one of the actual, you know, the, this Ashley Madison apparently had like two actual women that were part of it. The rest were some kind of uh, algorithm, right? <laughs> but uh, he hooked up with one of these actual women who uh, was a porn star, right? And he scared the shit out of her. Right. Like yeah. he was super crazy and yeah, violent. He was, he was into rough sex. Yeah, he was into rough sex. Like, so and she's not she's not unfamiliar with all of the kinds, but she yeah, to, so to scare her yeah. is probably quite a feat. Right. So, you know, leaving aside the the discussion of, you know, people's marriages are their own business and blah blah blah. He's a fucking creep. Yeah. He's, he's a, a scary man. That's he's true. A, he's a creepy man and he is a professional scold. He's, right. He's a holier than thou Christian. Right. And professional scold where if if you and I were in the public eye, well you are because you're a famous podcaster. I am that. You should see this place. This this facility is incredible. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, we have we've put countless hours into the I mean, I had to wait so long at reception. Right. And hearing your echoing footprints coming down the marble hallway. It's very it's, it's like a metronome for an hour. <laughs> but um you know, if we were in the public eye and st- stumbled i'm using air quotes in a way that he has he and his kind would be all over our asses oh yeah but you know he's of course he's instantly forgiven because he's in the right tribe yeah right well and 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 forgiveness is kind of their thing as we talked about earlier only but it's only for themselves sure right like well they you you can't give like if god's gonna forgive you you have to ask god and if you don't believe in god how if you don't believe in the right god yeah. How are you going to how are you going to get it? Well, it's like, you know, the same uh, he keeps coming up the same dumbass Mike Huckabee who keeps, you know, who endlessly drones on about Bill Clinton's infidelities and right. and is trying to use them against Hillary because that works somehow. Right, exactly. Um, Guilty by uh being the victim. Proximity. <laughs> right. Yeah, by being the victim. Um uh he gets furious whenever anybody brings up Josh Duggar. He's like, "Well, he's forgiven." Right. It's like, oh, this is great for you guys. Yeah. This is awesome how this works. Like, you know, in the in the in the Middle Ages and the age of of like the conquest of the Americas, the popes would hand out I think they were called plenary bowls. Right. So they'd give the conquistador this boop thing with a stamp and say, Go do what you gotta do. Don't tell me too much about it. Right. An indulgence. But give me some land and give me some gold. Yeah. yeah. So you're just forgiven in advance. Yeah. For insane sins. Go and indulge. Yeah, just <laughs> have some fun. Boys will be boys. Right. But, you know, any the rest of us, they will never, like, that will be on our permanent record. So do we know where Josh Duggar is? <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> He's getting it on. Branson, Missouri. So he so he literally just he skipped out of rehab. Apparently he has not been seen. Okay. Well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll keep you up to date with Duggar Watch. Either either he went on the run or he's all good. Or he's fixed. Cured. They fixed him. Woo. <laughs> he only needed that that first fifteen minutes. Back to the family research council. Yeah. I I, I think his his career in, in scoldery might be over though. Oh, do you think so? I think it's just starting. You think? But yeah, because they I love- think he, well, here's the here's the nice thing. I think you have to take at least a year yeah. off. Yeah. So we won't have to hear from him for a while. Yeah. And you then don't. and then he'll come back. A lunar year. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah no, no, we got to be generous about it. 
Yeah, he'll be back before Easter. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's what you were mentioning before, that this problem with the way this forgiveness thing, ask forgiveness, here's another issue with that. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like Catholicism during the pedophile scandal. Well, we're not going to tell the police because, A, we'll just handle it in-house. Right. And B, we ask for forgiveness. It's all good. He's done. It's like, well, no. Why do we need to get the exactly. police involved? He's fixed. Why God's not? right with him, so he's right with everybody. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to take us to uh, to merry old England, mm. where the the Episcopal Church, I mean, I guess that's, yeah, the... the, the uh, I guess this is the the uh, United States Episcopal Church. It's yeah. not. I'm. I. They're the, so it's not England, really. The it's, Anglicans. It, it's the it's the Amer- American version. Oh. Of them. Um, so better. So better. Yeah. They were here. Uh, I don't know if you no- noticed that uh, when they were here. Uh, they they had their general con- convention uh, here in Salt Lake City. They were here for weeks. It was it was a while, and it was really funny because you're not. We're not used to seeing people. Walking around in priest vestments uh, and such, and these are Anglicans, so they're like in like bright purple shirts yeah. with the collar or bright. Yeah, they're because because they're the fun ones. They, they had some nice color going on. They, they, yeah, they're colorful kids. Uh, they have chosen, and these are very liberal people uh, when right. it comes to a religion in general. They're very. They have they made the decision at that conference to divest themselves of fossil fuels. Oh, I didn't hear. I heard that they did the uh, uh, that they were going to allow gay bishops or no, it was gay marriage in the church. Yeah. Yeah. So that that took up all the oxygen, I'll bet. Right. Right. So one of the things that sort of made it in under the radar was that they decided that they would withdraw all of their holdings that are engaged in that are fossil fuel holdings. So they had so they had like investments in oil and all sorts of things. And Mm -hmm. they're backing out of that uh, as as an environmental campaign. Really? And and yeah, how big? How big? I don't know how big a church that is. I mean, there were certainly a lot of their clergy here, and it, it spoke to a certain population. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm what not. are they? They're not. They're the American Episcopal. Yeah, the, so they're they're part of the that uh, that Ang- that Anglican diocese. Right. Uh, so they're under the under the heading of the 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 Church of England or whatever, mm. and. Uh, the C of E. Uh, the C of E, sure. I, I don't know how big. It you know is. who the you know who the Pope of the C of E is? <laughs> um, yes, it's a guy named Justin. No, something or other. It's not. Okay, who are you going for? It's the Queen. Oh well, she's she, she's not well. So she's not the Pope, but she's kind of in charge. She's the Pope. <laughs> okay, that's fair. She's and she she has a less fancy hat than the Pope does. I don't know. She, have you seen her at Ascot? No. I'm sure she has some incredibly fancy hats for that shit. I meant I meant the really heavy hat they keep in the Tower of London with all the ro- all well, the rocks what on it. The the the, the metal hat with all the yes. rocks. All the rocks they stole from that's, their former empire. That's quite a hat. It's, it's a, a it's a very valuable hat she's got. It's a little it's a little gaudy. It is. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a little much. I'm going to see if I can find what size the Episcopal Church is in the United States. It's a um, size. It's pretty big. I mean, that, so that's so interesting. And so are they are they redirecting that those monies? I, you know, one wonders if Elon Musk suddenly had an influx of of uh, people a, of, of collection of, plate coins. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> suddenly an investment. Some uh, lifesavers and a tissue. Yeah, I don't know where that money goes. I imagine they still invest it, but but who knows? Well, that's cool. That's good for them. Yeah, the gays and 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 the planet and the planet. They're 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 really trying to. Pretty soon, they're going to vote Jesus out. Uh, this was their Vatican too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there you go. Good for them. Uh, I'm always pleased. Yeah, good when, for them when they do that. So. Uh, if you fellow listeners uh, would like to be involved in the conversation, if you have anything that you'd like to say about this, if you'd like to uh, tell us how big the Episcopal Church is, <laughs> you can write into us. That's podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call us. You can leave a voicemail for us. Uh, the number for that is uh, 424-666-8442, which is 666-TGIA. A lot of people don't know, know that. Frank doesn't say the TGIA part because... Uh, I don't know. Was I supposed to say that because Frank's not here? 
No, I'm going to do all of it. Oh, okay, great. I'm going to guide you. Th- I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold our listeners' hands and, and walk them through. Because oh, I can just wing it. They've heard it all before. All right. um, go to the Facebook page, kids, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and join. Uh, Mark here wouldn't know this because he's not on the Facebooks. Nope. But, uh, but you can join our group, uh, which is a closed group. Nobody will know that you're in it. Nobody will, it's not admitting to anyone that you're atheist except us. Uh, that's the TGIA members only lounge and ask to be let in and I'll let you in. Um, we've got a little bit of Pat Robertson here for you. Uh, he's going to, he's going to tell us all about how, uh, what, what you gays think, Mark. Pat, go ahead. So, so this, so I, as a gay man, yeah. I assume that you're cool with Pat Robertson speaking for your kind. I think so. I think, you know, I think everyone else in the world has been comfortable with him speaking for them. We, we're, just, we're just the next on the docket. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right, so here's this. The Constitution says the supreme law of the land is the Constitution. Duly uh, ratified treaties and uh, laws passed by the Congress and signed into law by the president. That's the law. Judicial decisions do not constitute the law. And uh, you're not obligated to do that. So uh, this whole thing is putting her in jail and so forth is nonsense. But it'll happen. It'll, and it's just the beginning. It's the warm-up of this battle. And I want you to know right now, you've heard it here, the gays do not just want to be recognized. They do not want to be accepted. They do not want to have just freedom. They want everybody to agree with them, and everybody who doesn't agree with them and does not f- comport with their way of thinking, they want to be punished, put in jail, or fined. That's the way they want it, and uh, you might as well get used to it. <laughs> He's a... Uh... Shit. Is the word out now? He found out. Did he, did he figure you guys out? You know, I left that memo... Oh. On the side table at the condo in Fire Island. And I'm. Uh, <laughs> that was you? Shit. You spilled the beans? Oh, man. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. I left. I got careless. I had too many mimosas. The gay agenda. And Pat was lurking as he does in the bushes. <laughs> as he likes, as yeah. is his wont. As is his wont. He's a, he's a good man. He's a. <laughs> and thorough. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh, so. Yeah. Where to also, begin. his his understanding of how our judicial system works is a is is a peachy thing, isn't it? Well, it works when he wants it to, and it doesn't when he doesn't. Right, exactly. When when the, come when when the Supreme Court comes down in favor of things that he likes, it, when it comports with his sincerely held Christian beliefs, then suddenly it's a very good institution. Then indeed. it is legal, right? So, okay, the, uh, I'm not exactly a a Supreme Court expert. Even what? though, yeah, I know. Even though I, I'm, why am I having you on here? I'm a huge fan of 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 Nino Scalia. <laughs> doesn't he look like? Doesn't he look like a balloon that is just so full of marinara <laughs> that the tiniest <laughs> jiggle? He's like, <laughs> so, will someone just pop him? Just pop that little boy R D. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize I know that was a racial slur. I'm sorry, Italian listener. Uh, um, Italian is not really a race. It's, it, I'm not even going to go to that. It was even, thought to be one up until now. Now they're <laughs> now they're considered white and delightsome. I think. Yeah, I think when they began immigrating to the United these United States, they were considered a race. They were yes. absolutely. But now they're just one of the big, beautiful American non Mexican family. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So, but you know the idea that uh, first of all they they keep calling these guys unelected. Yeah, you know, and which is actually. The 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 method by which Supreme Court justices are appointed uh, is in, I think it's Article three of this thing that they seem to love. And I'm trying to remember the name of it starts with the Constitution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's actually the the part written in ink with a feather. Right. Like the original bit. (laughs) Right. So they're unelected lawyers. Well, okay, they should be unelected pastors. Right. Exactly. But. This is how it works. Yeah, it is there as it is there as the graphite rod to control the out of control reaction of democracy. Right, and it's there, and they're there to interpret the law. So as exactly. soon as they say this is how the law is to be interpreted, that is the law. It is now law. Yeah, they did it. Done and done. All right. So if honestly, if they if they want to, you know, 
start that, we can go back and revisit Bush v. Gore, right. which nobody said poop about right. on their side of the aisle. So I said some poop about it. I said poop. I said a lot. Just of, like that. I said, All caps. Oh, oh, poop. Oh, poop. Well, we have a new uh, a thing coming up. Um, I, I'm, I've got a, an interview with one Bryce Blankenegel. Hmm. I don't even know. I, again, uh, I'm going to say that's not a real name. No, that came out of some kind of FBI witness protection <laughs> generator. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, but Bryce is the host of the Naked Mormonism podcast and was gracious enough to, while he was here in town to, uh, to come on and do a segment of What Mormons Believe uh, with us. So we're going we're gonna to delve deep with Bryce now. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> okay, we're here with Bryce Blankenagle. Blankenagle. I had already, I had it right before. You, you heard me say it right. Uh, I think so. Yeah. No, it took me a while to get it down to. It's I'm sure. Good. I'm sure. Like probably several years of your yeah, life trying, yeah. trying to just get that name out. Yeah, having a four syllable last name is, you know, it's kind of like a, a feeling of notoriety. It's like I am Blankenagle. That's right. And nobody I, else has that. Claim. I'm still ninety percent convinced that you made it up, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't. I have no problem with that. Everybody can make up their own names. Uh, anyway, B- Bryce, you are the uh, you're you're the host, the p- progenitor of the more naked Mormonism, naked Mormonism, naked Mormonism. Podcast. I don't know why my brain suddenly like decided it didn't know the name of your podcast. <laughs> naked okay. Mormonism. Yes. It's a it's a podcast. Um, not about nakedness so much as it is about Mormonism. Really, unfortunately. Well, you know, there's plenty of nakedness in Mormonism. You know, having the highest like porn rates and whatnot around <laughs> right, you know? right so you know i figured i would just take stick to the facts instead of sticking with the naked stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure that that's fine too yeah have you checked out the 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 mormon boys and mormon girls yes. Dot com? uh yes very much possibly too much <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me if you subscribe just uh <laughs> just give me a nod right now and i'll okay good 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 yep. nod I'll, across the table i'll need your uh your login information later <laughs> um so you so why Mormonism? Why why are you why are you taking that on as your topic? Uh, well, I grew up uh, in the Salt Lake Valley, uh-huh. um, the small town north of Salt Lake, um, and it was just the culture I was raised in and what I know the most about. And I just was curious about knowing the facts about it. I when I moved to Colorado a few years back, started debating a Christian buddy of mine. He was saying Mormonism isn't Christianity. Right. I'm like, dude, Jesus Christ is in the fucking name. Come on. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, see, yeah it's Christianity. That's Come Christ on. right there. Right, exactly. That's is Christ me. in the name of your church? <laughs> Don't be a jerk. <laughs> uh yeah he's he's actually become agnostic now so, oh <laughs> through nice. our discussions yeah good kind of, kind work of interesting yeah i'm like feathering <laughs> the cap on that one yeah for sure about. but yeah so he started telling me about all kinds of uh very interesting information about mormonism that i wasn't aware and uh just it just started with the book of mormon the changes in the book of mormon and i'm like ah, whatever I, that doesn't matter whatever and then i just started doing research and more and more research and it just all crumbled it yeah. all fell apart Oh dear! Yeah, oh, well, it's I mean, so sad when that happens, right? Isn't it? But it was—it's <laughs> like kind of a sweet, sweet relief for it to happen too, because oh, you yeah. know, growing up with like so much pressure. I mean, you, you had the same experience. I mean, you didn't grow up in was it Oklahoma, like Frank? Right. Yeah. Right. But I mean, you grew up here, right? Yeah. Yeah. You had the same Mormon culture experience, and it's as the sweater starts to unravel, it's. uh it just gets shittier and shittier <laughs> until you realize it's like, oh, okay, I don't have to worry about everything they're telling me. Oh man, you're you're absolutely right. The relief of shedding that all of that nonsense, like it's terrifying at first. Yes, but when it's all done, it's like taking the biggest shit of your life, and it's all done and right, over, right. and you feel so relieved. Yeah, it was a painful, painful process, but <laughs> oh, you feel so much better. <laughs> All that pressure gone. Yeah, exactly. All <laughs> that, the anxiety. That may be the best metaphor I've heard yet for not uh, for shedding your religion. Right? It's you just wipe taking the sweat off your brow. That big shit that you've been needing to take for so long. Oh, uh, yes. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, so one of the things that I wanted to do with you. Uh, now you were so you were LDS. Did you go on a mission? No, I left when I was uh, about 16, 15, oh, okay. 16, 17. Kinda, oh. And that was just out of apathy. That wasn't really questioning. Sure. It was just like, I don't like church. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mormon church is good at making you not like it. Yeah, well, and it kind of started out, uh, I hated fast Sunday so much, right? This, fast is, Sunday the, this is the day every month where you have to like not eat before you go to church. Yes, you, exactly. You just have to have a grumbly belly all through church. And 24 hours of hating your stomach. Right. Yes. Oh, you and, did the whole full 24-hour thing. Well, yeah, it was the 
night before, didn't have dinner, then right. didn't have breakfast the day, and then you'd have lunch, and that was like the best tasting lunch ever. See, well, as soon that's, as like, that's, that's some Davis County Mormon shit right there. We just we <laughs> ate dinner the night before. We just we didn't do a, we just didn't eat until after church. That was our yeah, whole we, thing. We didn't drink water. We didn't like. It was, Holy you know, shit! Yeah, it was. I, I remember feeling so ashamed when I would like accidentally <laughs> get a drink of water. I was like, like, Oh shit! I broke my fast. No, no. Yeah, because the water's a big deal. It is totally. Well, Jesus didn't. <laughs> have water for the 30 days oh my god so yeah and when as soon as i got my driver's license every fast sunday i would leave church and go and get a wendy's chicken sandwich and oh. it was the best thing oh. in the world oh my god oh no wait you were allowed to buy stuff on the sabbath no i, I wasn't allowed to do any of okay, that but, but that's but the, that's just, just what started it. you just okay yeah that's that's kind of what like opened the door to like nice well, I, okay so i i'm checking out at the line at the drive through and my car didn't get struck by Jesus lightning. Right, right. So maybe there, there's something. You know, <laughs> this isn't as big of a deal as I thought. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I think things would change if Jesus lightning came into more prevalence. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, and here we are. And here we are. Uh, so, I, you know, our listeners uh, who go way back with us will recall that Frank and I used to do segments called "What Mormons Believe," where we would uh, try to. Enlighten people on uh, on a few of the funnier, or weirder, or whatever beliefs of Mormons. And I don't find Mormonism to be that much weirder than any other religion, uh, except that they're newer. And so we have access to, like, way more of the weird shit at the beginning of things. And, well, and yeah, they I, okay, in fairness, they do have a lot of weird shit. But. Yeah, yeah, but weird in a sense that it's unique. Yeah. But not weird it is in a sense that it's weirder than any of the other unique things that other religions do. It's just their brand of weird. Right. Well, I mean, everybody like, oh, they have weird underwear and oh, they do, you know, they have the weird handshakes in the temple. That's not like mainstream Christianity. And then I just think, well, yeah, but mainstream Christianity believes in talking donkeys and stuff. Right. Exactly. So it's like, really? Is it that much weirder? But one of the things that I've brought you on today is uh, for is to talk about weirdness. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, uh, and it is a plenty. Yeah, it's Lots true. To talk about. Uh, so, is there is there anything that you wanted to launch in with? Um, I just so whenever I'm talking with a Mormon, this doesn't happen very often at all, right? But I just went to a Mormon wedding, and I kind of got a, a little bit of a taste. You know, I kind of was able to, you know, <laughs> wet the fangs a little bit. Sure. Um, but the main thing that you that's easy to stick on is the veracity of Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. Okay. Little, right? Sure. And if you can It's fundamental. Exactly, right. If, if, if you, you can if you can unravel that, you got you, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if the Book of Mormon is shot to hell, right. then then the whole religion is moot. There's right. no, no reason to be Mormon versus any other version of Christianity. Right. It's like if you can take down Jesus, then Christianity is kind of done. Right. Exactly. And Muhammad with Islam and right. Yahweh with Jeho or Jehovah with uh, Judaism and so on and so sure, forth. Sure, sure, sure. Right. An infinite regress of gods, right? Indeed. So my focus is, I, I mean, when I first started my studying of the Mormon religion was the Book of Mormon itself. Right. Because that's what fascinates me so much is this supposedly ancient tome of knowledge of ancient Christians here in the American continent. Yeah, you need to sort of back that ancients thing up because i think a lot of people don't understand because a lot of people their idea of what the book of mormon is is something that was produced in the 1800s by a guy named joseph smith yes but you're saying that that's not what it is <laughs> a craziness <laughs> okay so what uh, is the book of mormon according to joe smith it is i mean just an ancient tome where the the warring factions of native americans mm -hmm. recounted uh well this mormon person abridged all of their recountings of their history and them following jesus christ and right. it also includes jesus coming to this continent <laughs> right. after three days of horrible destruction and people dying all over and they're like what the fuck is going on why are our buildings falling and then jesus appears at three days later it's right. like worship me because i'm an asshole and killed everybody this crazy nazarene suddenly shows up what's amazing is that uh just to, just to clarify uh the people that are that are whose stories are recounted in the Book of Mormon are the Native Americans, but they didn't start here. They started <laughs> as Jews in Jerusalem and then sort of 
sailed to the Americas, and, <laughs> and that's yes. that's how they got here. That was one mode, or they took submarines. Well, there was the other. That was the other <laughs> thing. But they killed each other off, and then the, you know, in six hundred, that's when they all sailed over six hundred BC. That's when they sailed. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, but see. <laughs> It's like you and I sitting across from each other now. We're like, this is so stupid. Right. It's so ridiculous. But I didn't ever examine the the ridiculousness of the actual stories in the book for a long time. I wanted to know about the book itself. Well, it was just, I it. mean, those stories are so cool, especially when you're a kid and you you hear about like this boat that they built that was like kind of shaped like a football and it went <laughs> underwater and it was tight like a dish. Yeah. It's like, what? Wait. Really? They had a submarine? That's kind of cool. And then, and then, like, as a grown person, you look at all the other grown people and you go, wait, we're still believing this? Everybody? Can I... Are you all... Really? Oh, oh okay. Uh, we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> right, exactly. And that was that's what it was. I had to have a talk from my Mormon brain to my logical adult brain that was slowly forming. Right. I had to, to, to bring a bridge that cognitive dissonance and see what the fuck was actually going on. What's amazing about this is that it, it was it's only after you really leave the church that you start to learn the real stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the like like yeah, maybe a lot of this stuff is like enough cognitive dissonance that you have to leave, that you can't stay anymore. But then you start to learn some new stuff. So yeah. so what what kind of stuff are we talking about here? What's the well? Okay, the first fact that I found out was that there's almost or there's thirty nine hundred plus changes from the original eighteen thirty Book of Mormon to what people are reading today. That's a lot. That's a lot. And then as I... Now, most of those are just like typo fixes, right? Uh, no. Oh. Well, a lot of them are okay, but that doesn't include any punctuation changes. That doesn't include any... That's just word changes. Oh. Those are non-clerical changes. Really? Yeah. So I didn't realize that until I started doing more research. And then once I started diving into that further... I found out the organization that did that comparison is Utah Lighthouse Ministry. Sure. They're an amazing scholarly place. They do amazing, amazing work on Mormon history. And they're grumpy. It, they are. Yep, yep. Sandra and Gerald are a little they, bit grumpy. They don't, they don't like the Mormons very much. No, no. They <laughs> like Jesus and Jesus only. <laughs> but they did that comparison from an 1830 transcript, photocopy transcript, so right. that's legit, and compared it to a 1973 publication of the Book of Mormon, which right. still has a white and delights in it, which right, still right, has right. a lot of difference. It's been changed a number of times since then. Yeah. The, the current, most current one that people are using is a 2013 yeah publication and there are well over four thousand changes from that original to the 2013 that's a lot uh, yeah exactly that's and then, a high number of change now are they yeah. counting like if like if a full sentence is changed they're just counting every word one change. one change oh that's one change usually one change if it's an entire sentence that's removed or an entire sentence that all of the wording is changed a little bit then that's just one change this is crazy. There, there are thousands. And then that's you, a different book. Exactly. They're just, just, and they're then, just using a different book now. Then it goes so much deeper than that, because then you start to read um, the firsthand accounts of what the printer got from Joseph Smith. Yeah. That he set the type for the Book of Mormon for. Sure. And basically each then that chapter, first printer wouldn't have been a Mormon. No, no, no. The first printer no. would have just been somebody hired to print up this book yes, for us. Yeah, and he was just a, a, a guy working for a printing press in New York. Right. right. And so his name is, um, uh, the name of the press is uh, the E.B. Grandin Printing okay. Press. Sure. And the guy that, uh, uh, his name is, escapes me, John, John something. <laughs> John, John, the guy that was the printer. John, John, the guy that was a print and typesetter, right? right? So he did all of the work. Well, he took the printer's manuscript that he got from Oliver Cowdery and Joseph Smith, uh -huh. and basically each, or each chapter was one full paragraph. No capitalization, no breaks in paragraphs, what? no no punctuation, no nothing. It was just one chapter long <laughs> rant. Oh my god! So <laughs> it's like it's like Marcel Proust's nightmare. Just, <laughs> he was a, he tended to run on in his sentences. Yeah, uh, I'm just. What's amazing to me about that is uh, that the number of times as a Mormon you hear this sort of this idea that how could the 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 Joe couldn't have written the book himself mm. because he wasn't educated and and how could a young not uneducated boy have written such a beautiful book all by himself without with you know, without divine help or whatever 
turns out he can't. No, 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 he absolutely just, not. He just rambles. And there's tons of source text, too, that he pulled from. I mean, he was well, a oh, master yeah. plagiarist. That's oh, yeah. the thing, too. And um, the Ex-Mormon Foundation has recently used the, the beautiful, beautiful compilation of big data to examine 150,000 books that are written in, written in the time leading up to when the Book of Mormon was written. Right. And they did a, a analysis of phrases that were common in other books. Sure. One of which was titled The Great War of 1812. Right, right. And there are extremely rare phrases that are found in The Great War exclusively and found in no other books that are found in the Book of Mormon. Huh. And that book was used as a school book written in, I believe, 1816 for people that were going to school in Joseph's time when he would have been going to school. Well, like what phrases do you remember any of them? Um, there are thousands, literally thousands of phrases that and OK, so you judge the rarity of the match based off of how many words are in a phrase that are similar. Sure. And there are there are tens of thousands of phrases that have two words that are similar to each right, other right. that are unique. Of course. But then there's four word matches, which are extremely, extremely rare. And there's hundreds of those throughout the book. Right. Just tons of them in and, and very, very specific phraseology. Huh. And it's it's something that you have to look at their analysis of it in order to see it. But they just have pages and pages uh, that you can read of these phrases that there's a great war on one column and the Book of Mormon on the other column. Right. And you see the words in common and even the context of where those words are is similar, like in a battle after, you know, Captain Moroni is giving his speech about the title of liberty. Right. The title of liberty is one that is, you know, that's a three word phrase that's very, very unique that comes up in both books as well. Huh. And in the Great War, it's given by some amazing captain of the War of 1812. Right. And you see all of these analogs and you're like, <laughs> was it really unique? And this He just stole a fucking book from one of his schools that he went to. Well, and he also, he ripped off the Bible too. Oh, tons, tons of the Bible. He was like, yeah, he was <laughs> Actually, all over that. The typesetter, when he was setting the type for the uh, the Book of Mormon parts that have that the Bible plagiarisms, uh -huh. he actually went to the Bible to use it to correct the <laughs> script <laughs> so, so he could set it. He's like, uh, I think they got this part right, wrong. Let me go and check this. They were ripping. I know exactly where they were ripping this off from. Let me go check that out here. Okay, yeah, we'll just do it this way. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. And there's New Testament phrases long before Jesus ever comes over. Oh, really? Directly plagiarized right. into it. And it's just, oh. I, I remember uh, how normal it felt as a kid to hear the phrase, uh, it came to pass. <laughs> Drink. Uh, which is amazing because it's just so overused in that book. <laughs> It's uh, shocking. Yeah, Mark Twain said if you remove the and it came to passes, it would turn into a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not very well written. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Joseph Smith was a, a, fancy, a fancy character. I, 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 what's your take on him? I personally, I kind of like the guy uh, in history. He was a fraud. He was a, he was a, a nutball. But... I got to give it I got to give it to him. He must have been the most charismatic guy you ever met in your life. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like this would be the best drinking buddy <laughs> ever cuz of the crazy shit he would talk about. Oh sure. Just cuz yeah, some of some of his rants and I mean, he would throw the stone in his hat and he that gave him free license to say whatever he wanted. Yeah. And and to fix any problem he needed to. But yeah, that's that's something I find is he used to be just this amorphous prophet of God that I considered holy and right. revered so much. Light then, shone around his head. Yes, yes. All and of the, those things. Yeah, so he had a permanent halo and yeah. whatnot. But then the more I study him, the more I'm like, man. This guy's a badass. Yeah. I like this guy so much. I mean, there's things not to like about him. Marrying a 14-year-old's not cool. Yeah, generally. That's t that tends to be... And she was promised to him when she was nine, so... <laughs> so he, you're saying he, he, ex he exercised restraint? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? He, was, uh, he waited. <laughs> he waited years. What are you kidding? And then she got kind of cute, and was, eh, what are you going to do? Yeah, you know, they, they got to mature to a... You know, a certain point. Oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, but there's a lot of people that surround him that I'm even more fascinated by. Okay. Um, one of which is Oren Porter Rockwell. Oh, yeah. Which we had a little shot of his whiskey before coming up and recording. Here. Yeah, here in Utah, there's a uh, there's a, a distillery up in Ogden, Utah, that, that makes uh, a... It's a rip off of Fireball, really, but it's yeah. called it's called Porter's Fire. Mm-hmm. It's actually his distillery. He opened it when he moved out here. Did he really? In a hotel? Yeah. Oh, that's badass. Yeah, dude. No, this guy was a badass. I oh, believe me, I know. It's funny. A friend of mine have gone and uh, smoked at his grave. I don't know why. We just felt like that was a. We wanted to honor him, and we felt like doing something that Mormons would hate would, <laughs> would, was the correct way to but do that, it. He would have loved it. Yeah, he would. He would absolutely loved it. So tell us a little bit about, like, give us background on him. Why? Why is he important in Mormonism? Okay. Okay. So Porter Rockwell was Joseph Smith's friend growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, so Joseph uh, had that leg surgery when he was eight years old, and he had a limp for his life. Right. Um, Porter Rockwell broke his leg when he was ten. And had a limp for the rest of his life after that. So oh, they, they were limp buddies. They were limp brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so they kind of like bonded over it. And, you know, Joseph would get in fights all the time. Well, if there was somebody he wasn't tough enough to beat up, he'd go get his buddy old port. And they would go both beat them, wow. <laughs> beat the guy up, right? So they were like, you know, they were blood brothers, right? So um, they just grew up basically... Uh, running the church right joseph was the head of the church he had his assistants oliver cowdery and sydney rigdon and so on and so forth lots of other names in there hiram smith right but he had to have somebody that would go do the dirty work somebody that would go get shit done right, right. and that was old port and Porter was a he, they called him the the mormon angel of death uh the, the destroying angel yeah yeah that's right yeah. destroying angel that's, and that's, i like mine better i like the angel of death too no no destroying well, angel i'm could, gonna give it to them that's uh, that's a good one we could we could call angel of death hosea stout because he was a badass oh well there's that's... yeah that was brigham young's buddy yeah yeah and hosea stout was a dude that poisoned samuel smith for a month period with uh, arsenic or something <laughs> after <laughs> hiram and joseph were shot in carthage <laughs> Good Lord. So Brigham could, you know, usurp the power. Yeah. But anyway, so Old Port, he, uh, <laughs> just, the more you dive in, the crazier it gets. It's right? awesome. So Old Port, he was the destroying angel. Yeah. Um, Joseph Smith gave him a revelation, which is on that bottle downstairs. Um, if you never cut your hair, then no bullet or blade will ever harm you. Yeah. And that's why he's this wooly bear man looking motherfucker that's oh, just he's... has no soul. He looks amazing. Like if you see a portrait of him, he's got long hair and a beard and he just and and just death behind his eyes. Yeah, there's like, no soul in there. Like if that guy uh like walked onto the set of of Sons of Anarchy, everybody <laughs> else would be afraid. Like that's the guy. That's who we're talking uh, about. Yeah. He's riding the motorcycle that has flame tires and shit. Yeah. 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 He's, yeah. Yeah, he's That guy he's can walk into one. any biker bar and everybody else will like like shift over so he has a seat <laughs> that guy has a seat at any biker bar in the in the world anyway go on yeah, with him no that's exactly him that's the perfect way <laughs> people need to google him because you don't understand until you actually see a picture of him because he was a scary looking dude yeah but so he joseph gave him this revelation and it was after Oren had no sorry Oren porter rockwell i, I use the names interchangeably right um it was after he was being chased by a mob and he turned on a horse and he turned around on the horse and ran into the crowd, pulling out his two six shooters and shot everybody and killed them all. <laughs> and he was completely unharmed. And Joseph was like, all right, you're a badass. It worked. Never cut your hair. You're never going to die. <laughs> it worked. You're immortal. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So so he was the guy that um, that Joseph tasked with uh shooting lilburn boggs which was the senator that signed the mormon extermination order right and uh, he only shot him after this senator had retired or governor i'm not sure what he was after he had retired and he was just sitting in his house (laughs) old port just kind of disappeared off of the record books for a couple of days and then lilburn ended up with uh, a shotgun blast to the body wow and survived oh shit (laughs) and old port's defense was when i shoot a man I kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have been me. Yeah. I don't know who it was. Couldn't have been me. Uh, but then, then you get like little glimpses into his humanity, too. Because after he moved out here, after Joseph died, and he had opened up his distillery and his uh, motel and whatnot, there was a woman that um, 
she I believe she had had her hair burned off or there was something that had happened and she she didn't have any hair. Oh, dear. So Port cut off his hair. Right. Sewed it into a wig and gave it to her. Right. So he gave up immortality for her. Uh, yes. What what a gentleman. Right. So you you find out all these stories where he's like this whole horrible bloodthirsty killer yeah. and then you see little glimpses into like the the true human that was behind the facade that was old pistol pack and port yeah yeah he's uh he's 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 one of those characters that you don't hear about in mormon church they kind of love him <laughs> but they don't really they can't really talk about him yeah Cause, exactly because he's a little because like it's too much uh it's too tricky. <laughs> you can't really like you want it. Yes, he was on the Lord's side because he did the things that Joseph Smith told him. To, but he did kill a bunch of people. And, yeah, and, and a lot of the things Joseph said was just to go kill people. Right. Yeah. So then they have to address that problem is like, does a prophet of God actually tell people to go kill people? Yeah. He's a real prophet. Yeah, it's tricky. It's but, tricky. Yeah. So like the more I dive into the history, the more I look at it, the more I find these characters that are just so fascinating that I just want to constantly learn more about because they're they're just yeah, they're just so amazing. You don't you know, you don't fully understand them. You have to look at them through a historical lens. Right. But still, you can you can hear or read quotes from people that are around them and come to understand what they did and why they did it. And you're like, wow. That's an actual human being. <laughs> it's not just a paper cutout that I've studied before. Right, right. Or that the Mormon Church has told me about up to this point. Yeah. Porter Rockwell came to to Utah with the, after Joseph Smith died. Did mm -hmm. he? I mean, he he worked with uh, with Brigham and, and everything, right? Yeah, he was uh, he was the leader of the Danites for a while. Yeah. Um, I, which is a great name. I think uh, I think that anyone who uh, likes our show should start a Danite sect. <laughs> if you like me more than Frank, you should be a Danite. Uh, <laughs> hang on, though. Before that, they were called the Daughters of Liberty. Well, there's that, too. That's, yeah. You should also That's not quite as cool. <laughs> Why not? I, I don't know. Dan, it is kind of cool, though. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were like the, the Mormon death squad. Yeah. They just, they were the get shit dunners when just old port couldn't handle them, something by himself. Yeah. They yeah. were. That's, it's, it, it does seem like there needs to be, like, a stylish action film about the Danites, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Just like, just like, yeah. Tarantino needs to make a Danite oh, film. Yes. Shows the end of it of Old Port cutting off his hair, and then, <laughs> then that cuts to the very beginning, and right, yeah, it shows Oren, you know, limping along right next to Joe, their old buddies. Oh, oh yeah, spurs on his shoe, on his boots, and, <laughs> and, and death in his eyes. And my favorite thing about him was he's like this big, burly, scary-looking dude, right? Well, he had like this almost girlish, high-pitched voice. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was like a high, high-pitched voice. And when he was, when shit was going down or shit was going tits up, he was. Uh, it would go higher, like oh. when he was nervous. So oh, <laughs> I love that. Right? So he was like this big fat guy with the you know squeaky little voice. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then his favorite catchphrase was wheat. <laughs> Wheat? Wheat. Like, I don't know why. Wheat beer or what? I don't know. Wheat. Wheat. Ha-ha. Wheat. <laughs> That'll teach you. So, you know, if he was, like, super excited, he was like, wheat. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, uh, that makes him, yeah. There, there's, there's only ways to, you can only make him better. <laughs> he doesn't get worse. Yep. He only gets better. Uh, yep. Good old, old port. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah. So, and the the Mormon history. I mean, those are just two people we talked about. Yeah. It's replete with amazing, amazing, crazy, psychopathic people. Like, oh, Martin Harris, right? Okay. In my show, I call him not so smarty Marty. Right. Because he wasn't that smart. Right. Dum 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 <laughs> dum dum. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. You'll you'll recognize him if you uh, if you watch the uh, the the uh, South Park. Yes. Mormon episode. Yeah, and he was the he was a financial backing behind the Book of Mormon. Right. And he if it wasn't for him and Joseph's amazing swindling tactics, mm. the book would never have been published. We wouldn't be talking about it today, right? Right. So Martin Harris was a crazy, crazy guy. Yeah. Like a crazy religious zealot. Um like one time he recounted a story in a bar to a guy that he just happened upon a deer in the woods. Yeah. And he walked and talked with the deer for a few miles. Then the deer claimed that it was Jesus Christ. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a better story than uh, than Joseph Smith's story. <laughs> right. Exactly. They should have gone with there should be there should be Harrisites out there. 
the heresies <laughs> the heresies uh yes so yeah i mean there's there's tons of just weird people that's not throughout the history that's not yeah. and uh and you talk about all of them on your show yes yeah and that's that's what i try to do in my show is look at the history look at it in a chronological time frame okay so like with episode one starts out with joseph smith being born in Pulteney, vermont 1805 okay and then it's just a chronological timeline and um you know nine months almost a year into the show now of every two weeks 22 something episodes um, we're finally to the point uh, a few months after the first congregation of the church. Oh, wow. So uh, it, it's, I rely really heavily on quotes. I right. try and talk about like the human element that's couched in between all of the quotes. Sure. And then I try and take a lot of uh, Mormon websites, LDS.org, Fair Mormon, uh, BYU websites. I try and take a lot of those. Sure. And then um, see how they take the facts. How they stack up against what seems to be actually true uh, yes or uh, or i try and uh pit them against quote-unquote anti-mormon right sites because when you're a mormon anything that's not by the church is all anti it's true uh, i was uh, when i first started uh i started a blog called thank god i'm atheist long before i started a a podcast and i just sort of sent out to all my friends uh on facebook a link that was just like hey everybody come and read this because I didn't think that it was anti anything. I was I was like I would talk about things that seemed, you know, hypocritical to me or things that didn't make sense to me or whatever. And I got some really angry messages back. Why are you so anti Mormon? It's so sad to me now that you're. So, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> anti. You're anti. Yeah. If you say something that isn't pro. It's definitely anti. Exactly. In their minds. And that's why so many people have been kicked out recently. Right. I mean, you have you have these legitimate historians like Dan Vogel, who has been doing years and years of research. And actually, he's he published a five volume uh, tome of amazing Mormon documents, all edited and annotated by him. Right. And it's uh, just early Mormon documents by Dan Vogel, and a listener actually sent me that volume. And they're wow. the whole set, and I use it every episode unfailingly. Yeah, that they're just amazing because it's all the documents themselves. You know, a lot of, there's some that are photocopied. Most of them are copied word for word. Sure, I mean it's all just really undeniable. Just the documents transcribe. Are there. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he's it's a 30 year research project that he's published, mm -hmm. and he was exed because he was dissenting. Yeah, it's tricky. You know, my my parents were both LDS historians. So no uh, my mom, when she was, uh, it, she worked in the church history department, which they used to have and don't have anymore. <laughs> um, and they they got sort of sent over to BYU eventually. But but yeah, whole, you you've heard of the September six, which was back in the. I want to say early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, something like that. A whole bunch of six people all in one month got uh, excommunicated oh. for uh, practicing the dark art of history. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. amazing. So this, this, this is not a new phenomenon. No. This, this goes back a ways. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I wish you all the best in your endeavors. And uh, if, if folks want to find you, they... they, they Go to their podcasting uh, app of choice and f look for the Naked Mormonism podcast. With I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. And um, the Facebook page, I actually have somebody that runs it for me. Cool. Uh, it goes by the name of Demon East. I know you guys have the same kind of thing. Yeah, and it's great. she posts way, 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 way more on the Facebook page than ever I could cover in any episodes. Awesome. So if people ever want to know way more about Mormon history than what I talk about, uh -huh. check out my face, you know, the Naked Mormonism Facebook page, and they, their your mind will be blown. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have you back to, to do another What Mormons Believe sometime next next time you're in town. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks all for right, having me. All right, man. Dude. I hope you all, ladies and gentlemen, feel enlightened by, by Bryce's thing. Thanks for coming on again, Bryce. Yeah, and if you would like to know even more about Mormonism, I, I'm sure Frank and Dan can arrange 
for a couple nice young fellas to come around your place. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, those guys don't know a lot, uh, surprisingly. They only know what they're what they're allowed to know. Uh, exactly. Those they're, missionary boys. They're kind of the worker bees. They just <laughs> know where the flower is and how far it is. Right, yeah. So so Bryce is probably your best bet for, for, for the in-depth stuff. But they're fun uh, to talk to. So <laughs> It's true. And they'll do your, your housework for they, you. They will. Uh, thanks again um, for coming on. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, reach out to us for any reason, uh, you can do so. Our email address. Why don't you, Mark, I'll bet you could give our email address. Oh, shit. It's uh, TGIA. Nope. Oh, thank God I'm atheist. It's podcast at thank God I'm atheist.com. Or you can uh, you can call our and leave a voicemail for us. And the number for that is eight. Uh, it's four two four. Now I don't even remember. Four two four six 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 T G I A. That's four two four six 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 eight four four two. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash T G I Atheist, and uh, also you can uh, you can join the members only lounge. That's uh, on Facebook. It's called the T G I A members only lounge, and I will let you into that. Uh, hey, thanks to Mackenzie. Uh, for doing our Facebook page and being in charge of that. We just got 5,000 likes on the Facebook page, which is a large number. It's not internet large, but it's large for us, and we are, we're, 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 we're pretty pleased about that. Wow. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for their music. Isn't it great? Yeah. I love it every it's week. delightful. Yeah, and thank you, Mark, for, uh, for, for coming on in literally no notice at all. It is a great pleasure and uh, honored to be here and support what you guys do, and I hope Frank feels better soon. All right. Uh, so, and thank you, dear listener, for uh, for, for tuning into us uh, all these weeks, and we sure do appreciate you having you listen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.